Do you suffer from hair loss in thyroid disease? Maybe hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, or maybe you don't have a thyroid. These tips will still apply to your situation, okay? I would like to explain you 20 most common causes and also fixes for hair loss in thyroid disease, but also to those of you who don't have a thyroid gland. So the first one is low iron levels, and usually you can check it with low ferritin levels. Ferritin indicates low iron storage in your body, okay? And anything lower than 40, 35 will usually give you hair loss. So what you want to do, you want to really check this ferritin on your next lab test and anything which is not in the middle of the range, which is not optimal, means that you should supplement with iron because iron is both important for your hair growth, but also for your thyroid function. Second thing is biotin. Biotin deficiency, which is vitamin B7, uh, will most probably you know, result in hair loss. This is because biotin is needed for the keratin production. Keratin is a structural part of your hair. So if you don't have enough biotin and thus you know, keratin, you will also struggle from hair loss. Very important thing that you want to remember about biotin, so vitamin B7, is that whenever you are doing your blood tests, you don't want to take this biotin at least three, four days before doing the labs. This is because biotin can unfortunately influence labs. But other than that, you can just supplement it uh, for two to three months and then make a break, okay? So the next one is zinc and selenium. Zinc and selenium is important for oil glands around your hair. So if you don't have enough zinc or selenium, you can struggle from hair loss because your hair follicles are you know, struggling, they, they are more prone to being damaged, these kind of things. But also zinc and selenium are strong antioxidants and they are also very important for your thyroid hormones production. So if you are deficient in any of them, you can suffer from hair loss. Uh, now, very important thing when it comes to zinc and selenium, remember, remember to always take them for at least uh, you know, six to eight weeks, but then make a break of one to two weeks. This is because too much or too long supplementation from zinc and selenium can also give you hair loss, okay? Another one, uh, sixth you know, cause of hair loss is collagen. Collagen, specifically type 1 and 3, is a strong antioxidant and is needed for hair regeneration. Not only that, but it's also important for your gut health. If you suffer from unhealthy gut, like for example SIBO, leaky gut, candida, or any other gut issue, this can result in hair loss because unhealthy gut means autoimmunity, which also triggers you know, hair loss. So what I usually recommend is to supplement with small dose of collagen one and three to make sure that you are getting enough hair and your hair follicles grow you know healthy uh, now small tip don't supplement with too high doses because this can be too harsh for your gut and can actually give you the opposite effect okay then sixth most uh, you know common cause of hair loss is a deficiency of amino acid L-methionine. L-methionine is uh, important for keratin, but also it boosts your collagen. So again, we are kind of dealing with the same situation. If you have methionine, L-methionine deficiency, you can struggle with you know, brittle hair or hair loss. So make sure to always include some L-methionine in your diet, okay? Then eighth uh, you know, vitamin and cause is vitamin B6 deficiency. This vitamin uh, helps to create your red blood cells which transport oxygen. So if you don't have enough oxygen production, guess what? Your hair follicles are not getting ex oxygen and this can result in hair loss. So always make sure, uh, especially if you struggle from this chronic fatigue during your day, to check your vitamin B6 and supplement, this should help you, okay? Then we are getting to point number nine. Point, point number nine is MSM. It's very important because it elongates the anagen phase of your hair. So anytime you're suffering from hair loss, this usually means that your anagen phase, because you know hair growth has a couple phases, this usually means that the anagen phase, so the growth phase is very short and the telogen phase is increased, so the stop growth phase, okay? So in order to increase it, you want to actually supplement with MSM, that uh, in this way you are making sure that you are increasing this anagen phase, uh, but not only that, MSM is also great for gut healing. So again, 
as I was saying, if you struggle from some gut problem, MSM can help you, okay? So this is point number nine. Point number 10 is high testosterone levels or too low testosterone levels. So this will be especially problematic for you if you struggle from PCOS uh, and your testosterone levels usually in PCOS or PCOS are too high, okay? You can check it by checking free testosterone levels, but also DHEA. And if any of them or both of them are increased, you have to work to decrease these testosterone levels, okay? So usually things like, for example, grape seed extract uh, should help you. We've made sure to include this in our formulas, by the way. So this is amazing testosterone blockers that, uh, blocker that basically decreases your testosterone levels and help you to regulate it. So in this way, you can regulate your hair loss. Uh, another thing is uh, matcha root. Matcha root is also amazing. Uh, if you struggle from increased testosterone, PCOS, thyroid disease, this can also help you, okay? So I always recommend to check for testosterone. If it's increased, uh, remember to use these two herbs, okay? Then uh, another thing, point number 12 now, uh, is autoimmune reaction, okay? So autoimmunity. I always say, and I always recommend to you that it's always good to not only check TSH and T3 and T4, but also anti-TPO and anti-TG, so uh, thyroid antibodies, okay? Why? Because in this way, you are checking for autoimmune reaction. And anytime you are suffering from autoimmune reaction, so high autoantibodies, this can contribute to hair loss because, again, your hair follicles get destroyed, okay? And in order to prevent this from happening, I mean, the first step is to check for it, right? So you check with blood tests. And the second step in order to prevent it, uh, you have to make sure to use this, uh, you know, previous steps that I've been speaking about this will for sure help you to decrease this autoimmune reaction but also you want to work on your diet so make sure to skip gluten dairy sugar okay these kind of things usually increase your autoimmune reaction so you want to absolutely avoid them okay Point number 13 is poor gut health. So as I was saying, gut issue, like for example, SIBO, uh, you know, candida, leaky gut, those kind of issues, unfortunately, increase inflammation, but also increase autoimmune reaction. So if you struggle from constipation, diarrhea, uh, you know, bloating, these kind of things, you want to consume bone broth every day. Bone broth is amazing because this will help you to fix your gut, to fix this, you know, leaky gut, and in this way, you are fixing your gut barrier, you are decreasing inflammation, and you are decreasing autoimmune reaction. So make sure to include bone broth in your diet, especially if you struggle from this kind of problem. Number 14, guys, low stomach acid. Unfortunately, low stomach acid can decrease the absorption of not only iron, but also of other minerals and vitamins that are needed for hair growth. So if you suffer from low stomach acid, usually the first symptom is heartburn, you can benefit from supplementation of apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar used, you know, one teaspoon uh, with your meals. So with every meal, you can be using one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and one glass of water. This should help you to acidify your stomach environment and improve this absorption of iron and other important minerals for hair growth. Remember that if you suffer from some side effects from apple cider vinegar after the first week, stop, okay? Don't force it. So the next point is point number 15, which is these minerals, like for example, copper, calcium, or manganese. So as I was saying, you have to make sure that you have enough of the low stomach acid, but also if you suffer from a deficiency of manganese, copper, or for example, calcium, you can also suffer from hair loss because those minerals are needed for hair growth. So we've actually made a formula that includes, you know, all of these minerals and vitamins that I've been speaking about. And you can get this formula at h-boss.com. This is really amazing formula that not only has these minerals, vitamins, but also herbs that help you to balance these hormonal levels of testosterone, estrogen, and other hormones, okay? Number 16. Number 16 is insulin resistance. This is something that you have to actually work on, okay? Whenever your glucose levels are too high, or your glycinated uh, hemoglobin is also, you know, too high in the last uh, three months you've been suffering from insulin resistance, you have to work on it using diet. So make sure to avoid gluten, sugar, processed foods. Make sure to also not eat too frequently because eating too frequently, unfortunately, contributes to insulin resistance, okay? 
So this is a dietary change. Number 17 is too high estrogen and too low progesterone, also so-called estrogen dominance. This is because whenever your estrogen is too high and your progesterone too low, or even your progesterone can be optimal, but estrogen too low, your ratio to, of you know estrogen to progesterone is not uh, balanced. And this makes you being dominant in estrogen and you can be suffering from hair loss because too much estrogen contributes to damage of hair follicles, okay? So this is point number 17. Point number 18 is too high DHT. DHT is dihydrotestosterone and if you have too much of it, Again, you will be suffering from so-called male pattern baldness. Uh, so if you are having too much, you know, facial hair growth, or maybe you have like uh, hair loss in the uh, on your hairline, this is usually the first symptoms of too much DHT. So in order to block it, make sure to uh, consume more green tea. So just drink green tea during your day. And also another good tea is fenugreek. Fenugreek also together with green tea, they block DHT, okay? Those are natural DHT blockers. Point number 19 is too much stress, which contributes to too much cortisol production. Too high cortisol not only affects your estrogen levels, which again gives you this estrogen dominance, but also contributes to low T3 levels because too high cortisol blocks T4 to T3 production, which really messes up with your thyroid gland, okay? So you want to be proactively decreasing your stress through yoga, through, through walking, you know, brisk walking under the sun really helps to decrease uh, uh, cortisol, but also you want to be uh, supplementing with herbs and supplements that help to decrease cortisol, like for example, our Calm and Sleep formula on h-post.com. This is really amazing formula because it has a lot of supplements inside that help you to balance cortisol, like for example, GABA or for example, melatonin, okay? All of this help you to sleep better, release this anxiety and be cal more calm. And the last point, guys, is thyroid medication itself, okay? Which contributes to imbalanced thyroid levels. So if you are taking thyroid medication, which is not uh, tailored to you, like for example, you are taking levothyroxine, some generic brand, rather than NDT, which would be better for your situation, this can unfortunately contribute to, for example, low T3 levels and hair loss, okay? This is something that you can't really fix on your own. This is something that you really have to consult with a good, uh, preferably functional doctor, and he will help you to choose the best thyroid medication uh, for your specific situation okay this is very important because sometimes in thyroid medications what they are doing they are putting some dyes or fillers or substances that are just messing up with your thyroid levels and this causes hair loss okay so one thyroid medication is totally different than from you know from the other and don't make this mistake of just taking some generic thyroid medication but always consult with your trusted doctor to choose the best uh, medication you know according to your symptoms and according to your lab tests okay so that's everything this is really 20 points best most important points on how to fix your hair loss and thyroid disease if something is unclear please comment below and i will be more than happy to answer your questions see you guys in the next video